Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we're going to be doing another breakdown today. Uh, why the pause and why am I not doing an actual reaction? Well, folks, <laughs> it's been a bit complicated. Um, I've been having some technical difficulties for the past couple of videos that I've tried to upload now. And it's resulted in a delay. I apologize, but I believe I have finally gotten it figured out. <clears throat> in the meantime... So what you need to know is that with these two technical issues that I've had with the past two videos, I have, uh, may or may not have done full-blown first-time reactions, and they were going to be amazing videos, but I got all the way through the video and started editing the first one, and then I've realized that the audio for the window that you see was not working, so that meant you heard no music in the final product, and... As most of you know, there is no redos when it comes to this. If you botch something, you have to start all over again. <clears throat> so, I uh, went and tried to do another one thinking that I had fixed the issue. I reacted to a different song because I went and did a reaction to a song and then my technology didn't work. So then, oh crap, well now I can't record that for the audience. At least I can't record a first time reaction for the audience anymore. But, I thought I had it fixed. So then I went and uh, did another video to another song that I hadn't heard before. And, uh, as fate would have it, still wasn't fixed. But, this time I'm confident that it's fixed. And I've run several tests, and we're good to go. So, with that said, we're going to do the reaction. We are going to react to, even though it's not our first and break down the bass gang's cover of Arabian Nights from Aladdin. Now, folks, I, uh, again, I apologize for the delay in videos, and I, this was actually one of the songs that I had f recorded a first-time reaction to and just wasn't able to get it out to you due to the technical issues I just mentioned, but I'm excited to break it down for you today nonetheless. So with that said, we're going to jump right into the breakdown and analysis portion of the video. Normally, for those that who have, for those who have never been to my channel before, I'm Ethan Drew. I break down music and I do podcasts with singers, and I try to do my best in these videos to do a <clears throat> first-time reaction portion of the video where I don't actually pause the music at all, and I may comment, but I will not stop, listen to it all the way through, and then we'll go back and listen to it again. But that next time we will actually break it down and be pausing a lot to talk about the nuances in the music. So, this time it's just going to be a breakdown and analysis, and most likely going to be for the next video as well, because I want to still get that content out to you despite having the issues that I've had. So, with that said, we're going to jump right into the breakdown and analysis portion of the Bass Gang's cover for, or of, excuse me, Arabian Nights. We'll see you in just a second. All right, folks, so we have arrived at the breakdown and analysis portion of the video. Like I said, we're going to be stopping a lot here to talk about what's going on in the music. So if you don't like tons of stopping when it comes to reaction and breakdown videos, this might not be the video for you just simply because for because of that reason, because I, I stop a lot to talk about the music. With that said, we're going to jump right in. So I'll be looking right here quite a bit because this is where my actual screen is and my camera's right here. So... Bear with me if it looks like I'm looking over here a lot. It's because I'm actually looking at the music video. <clears throat> Let's get this thing full screen and we'll get rolling. <clears throat> so the first uh, bass note that we have here at the beginning of the song... <clears throat> That's going to be an A1. Now, all four of the bass singers in, correction, all, I mean, everyone in the bass gang, including Casper, are all capable of singing a full A1 in chest, natural chest voice. I cannot do it right now because it is not in the morning. But what I think is actually happening with this particular A1 here is whoever's doing it is doing it through a subharmonic. And the reason being is because it likely was recorded in a time of day where it didn't sound thick enough for what they wanted as a creative choice within the arrangement. <clears throat> but there's either one or multiple A1 subharmonics going on back here in the background. Love it. 
So they've got those uh, Middle Eastern style drums in here. I'm not entirely sure what they're called. Anyone that's educated in percussion or uh, Middle Eastern music, please enlighten me on uh, what these are called. But they are definitely present. You hear them a lot in Middle Eastern music as well as Egyptian music. And not totally a cappella, to be honest with you. And <clears throat> the bass gang is a largely a cappella music group. And, but they don't always do purely a cappella, such as a perfect example of, I'm trying to think of a perfect example that the bass gang has covered before. Oh, so a, a tune of theirs that they've done is not immediately coming to mind where they've not gone fully a cappella other than this one right here, but I know that they've done one before. Now, someone may ask, what is acapella? And for those of you that have not been to my channel before and don't know what acapella is, uh, you might be living under a rock because I do cover a ton of acapella content. But if you do not know, acapella is where you create music using only the human body and human voice <clears throat> and minimalizing external sources other than the human voice or the human body. Some people like to argue that it's just the human voice, and some people like to say it's human voice and body. Either way, I personally see that it's both. So, But all that aside to say that this piece of theirs is not actually fully a cappella. They do have a little bit of percussion in here. But that doesn't make it any less awesome. Oh, I come from a Someone, someone, we got someone doing uh, bell tones in the back here. It almost sounds like they are, they've got a, like a really light timber to them. So I'm thinking that we had one of either one of the guys or Casper doing the bell tones. Dum, 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 dum. That's an E4, by the way, for uh, the Note Maniacs. And from a far away place where the caravan cabals roam. Culture and tongue, it's chaotic, but hey, it's home. So, this is <clears throat> this is great. So, this is something that I talked about in the first run through of this video that I did. Marwan here, for those that don't know him, he is, if I recall correctly, 20 or 21 years old, and he started singing bass when he was about or he a few years ago. His voice was not quite this deep whenever he started out, and I've been listening to his vi and listening to and following his voice intently ever since I discovered him. And he's just got a really freaky, cool voice because he's got the lighter timber of perhaps a lyric baritone, even, but he's still got a solid, resonant bass range. I, I don't, I don't really get it because. <clears throat> to me, he's a bass baritone, and he's a really good one at that, but even most bass baritones don't sa don't have this freaky combination of really thick, resonant low notes with, higher par with a ton of higher partials compared to also having that lighter timber and also having the lighter, higher range as well in the natural chest voice. So... All that to say that his voice didn't used to be this low, and it didn't used to sound this refined. He's only 20, 21 years of age, and he's still... and it's, he's, His voice is aging like fine wine already. I mean, just listen to the higher portion of the leads here. So, you have the lower portion of an actual note in a bass singer's range. So, think of more of a sign. Like a sine bass wave. So it's very light, very dark. I mean, like light as in like warm. So warm. And not having a lot of higher partials, it's more just... It's just normal bass. But when you've got someone like Marwan who's got really thick, got a lot of resonance there and has a lot of higher partials in their voice... It's it's going to have a lot more 
higher frequencies in the actual sound. So instead of, it's going to be more like, so although I did change my volume in the same note that I just sang there, listen to the difference here if you, if you can catch my drift. So, so one of them has higher frequencies and that's going to be the second one that I sang. Huge tangent there, but all that to say that his voice has definitely gotten richer and more colorful and just lower in general since even last year. I mean, he didn't he didn't even have this monstrous of an A1 in chest last year. Like he was he was singing an A1 in his copycat cover with the boys over at Bass Gang and that A1 didn't sound as good as this one right here. I'm telling you, his voice is going places. Reculture and tongue gets chaotic, but hey, it's home. When the winds from the east and the sun. I'm telling you, with a well balanced voice, he just goes up a whole on a whole nother octave like it's nothing, and he's just whoo. Just listen how how much control he has here. Runs from the west and the sands in the glasses right. Come on down, stop on by. Also, we've got to talk about the people covering the bass and the background parts because what would be a acapella cover? a group acapella cover without the backing vocals, right? So, Bobby, Peter, and Tommy are the ones covering the rest of the piece. But in this particular section, Tommy is actually the one that's doing the bass. And it's very well controlled. It's bouncing around. It legitimately almost feels like a stand-up bass with four strings. You'll see what I mean. Very well controlled. The glass is right. Come on down. So he descends from an A1 in chest there down to an F sharp one in subharmonic or inhale bass and then down to the E1. Also is a as a subharmonic. It, well, it could be to, see Tommy is one of those individuals that is just freaky good at just about every single extended technique and just a, anything you can do in singing. So, with these bass notes, he could easily be doing chest fry, inhale bass, subharmonics, or he could even be growling these notes. He is that good at all four of these things, it could be any of the four. But if you give me just a second to listen through to this one more time, this little section, I can probably tell you which one it is. Knowing Tommy as a friend of mine, I might be able to pick out what he's doing here. Pretty sure that's going to be growl. Past the A1 that you heard there. I can't quite get it right now, but the that note there. The I'm trying to find it here. The F sharp. That note and the E1 also are both going to be either in growl, which I'm pretty sure it is. Or alternatively, it's going to be inhale. Inhale bass. And also, he does a really nice bass walk down here in his natural chest voice. Listen to Tommy here. To another Arabian night. Arabian nights, like Arabian day. That's an E4 in natural chest there from Marwan. I'm telling you, really balanced voice. It can get up there and get down there at the same time. And something else that I talk about a lot in my covers is the power of silence or the power of minimalism. So what I'm referring to here is you heard these little sections where they cut out the music pretty much. The only thing you could hear was the tail end of a vocal note. Or, I mean, there was no percussion. The only thing you could hear was the release of a note. And 
it introduces a, a very healthy amount of variation into the music. If you didn't have variation, it would get stale. And if you had too much variation, it would get boring. So nice job, guys. Arabian. And the really, really sweet E1 subharmonic from Bobby here, because I am also blessed to know him as a personal friend of mine. And I can confirm that subharmonics are his preferred extended technique for singing beyond uh, low G. Although he doesn't have that note very often, his preferred extended technique is uh, subharmonics beyond the G sharp A flat one, where he usually bottoms out in his chest range. And I dare say Bobby's among the best subharmonic users on the face of the planet. It's just so, so well controlled, and it sounds so incredibly chesty. It's got a lot of meat to it. Listen to this. Very well controlled. Also, listen to all the riffing that Marwan is doing here because that it it takes a you have to be able to land on the pitches when you're riffing, and you have to be able to be accurate with your pitches while you're riffing in order to sound good. And of course. I can almost guarantee you that each note in th some of these riffs here is probably pitch controlled, pitch corrected to some degree. You have to be able to hit all of those notes in order consecutively and be pretty accurate in order for pitch correction to not make you sound like a robot when it's trying to correct you whenever you're riffing. And it, it, <laughs> To be able to land on all those pitches accurately whenever you're riffing, pretty much no matter how fast or how slow, you really, really have to make sure that you are on your game when you're riffing. Obviously, Marwan is because, I mean, it sounds amazing. As you wind through the streets of the fable bazaars in the cardamom club. We've had a, a tempo change here that's actually increased slightly. It has gone up a little bit. Have you noticed a very, very subtle speed up here? It definitely just sped up. I'll let you I'll see if you can notice it. You wind through the streets of the fable bazaars in the cardamom cluttered stall. It's they're moving ever so slightly quicker. While you haggle the price. I really dig the harmonic echoes in the background here, in the background voices. So they're the guys, Tommy, Bobby, and Peter are all echoing Marwan here, but it's very subtle. And also the harmonies in this are just completely epic. Like they're very complicated and I'd love to break them down for you. But we just will not have enough time for this because it will probably push this video over 30 minutes. So uh, we won't be breaking down the actual individual harmonies, but take a take a second to go back and listen to the echoed harmon harmonic parts that they're doing in the background here as well. It is the bread and butter of this cover. Without it, you would just have Marwan singing his lead with percussion and not that that wouldn't be cool. But it just, it wouldn't be complete. It wouldn't be what it is. Of the silks and the satin shawls, oh, the music. Ooh, listen to that uh, walk up and walk down bass line from Tommy. Hello. Of the silks and the satin shawls, oh, the music. Listen to that, man. That is epic. You haggle the price of the silks and the satin shawls. Oh, the music that plays as you move. So, something else interesting I wanted to show you guys here is um, what they call a phaser effect. And this effect is applied in post editing before you actually release the music in what we call a DAW, a digital audio workstation. And in short, it gives the it gives whatever sound you're producing almost like an echo feel, like it's traveling through a, almost like a tunnel in a way. Give it a listen, and I'll try to draw, draw your attention to it. Satin shawls, oh, the music that plays as you move through a maze in the haze of your pure delight. 
it's a really neat little effect. You just can't overdo it. And I think this is well placed in this arrangement. In a dance, you were lost in the trance of another Arabian night. Uh Listen to that bass walk down here, guys. Tommy is crushing it. Of another Arabian night. It's just... Trance of another That is a beautiful, beautiful bass walk down there. Incredible. Listen to that downward riff those downward riffs that Marwan just did incredibly clean. I'm reinforcing what I said about him earlier because this is just incredible. The pitch accuracy you have to have in order to be able to do this, especially with a lot of these notes being only a half step apart. And what I mean by a half step apart is that they sound very similar, but they're not the same. So they're either one, a little bit of up above or a little bit down below. So let's say for instance, I'm going to sing you an A. Ah, uh, and then I sing you a G sharp or a flat, which is the same note, but a half step lower. So this is an A, ah, uh, and then this is an A flat, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. So those notes are pretty close together, but they're not the same. And it's like I said, riffing with these pitches being only a half step apart. It takes some serious skill, serious accuracy. See? Also, the tempo just increased again. It's a little bit faster than it was the first tempo change. Peter, are you the one doing the high notes in the back? Sounds an awful like it. You're the only one that does opera in this group, and opera people tend to sing pretty high even when they have the lowest voices. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Peter, let me know. That was a really sweet and very short, concise E1 subharmonic from Marwan there. Incredible. Another section where there's basically nothing happening. A quick release. There's almost complete silence. Variation. I love it. And I guarantee you the person doing that voice right there is Tommy because he has incredible growl control. And so this voice that he's doing is created through a, a vocal effect called growling. <clears throat> Excuse me. It goes just like this. This is the growl voice. Forgive me if that was loud, and I may tone it down a little bit in editing if it was too loud. But that's what the growl effect is. And... They actually left in the higher partials this time to give it that true, evil, uh, beast-like effect whenever he was speaking. Love it. Love it. I'm telling you. Very characterized, but very... very with, a lot, with a lot of purpose. It feels like it belongs there. Arabian. And the key change here, we went up a half step from E to F. And Marwan, I'm telling you, again, going straight up into that vo that head voice, just super well controlled in his high chest range, too. I mean, he goes up to a tenor high C 
in the chest head voice mix and it's just chef's kiss beautiful and you can't the seam the seamless transition from chest voice into head chest voice mix was stellar i mean there was that transition unless you have a very trained ear you're not gonna notice it He's also singing a full-on G5 in head voice there. Very high. So someone in the background is doing an A flat G sharp one, a subharmonic, and I'm, and then you've got Marwan just full on chest belting an A flat G sharp four, and it's just, Whoa! I mean it's just, it's just, Whoa! I mean it's just, oh, that you got an A flat G sharp one and an A flat G sharp four happening at the same time, which is just perfectly exemplifying why the bass gang is so freaking good at pretty much anything you throw at them musically. You've got anywhere from like way up here in the tenor range all the way down into the depths in the ze in zero octaves. It's just nuts. The amount of talent between these four to five individuals is just mind blowing. That is a D1 subharmonic. Night. Very deep. And Marwan's D1 subharmonics, or his lower subharmonics, didn't even use to sound this good. They're just getting better, just like the rest of his voice. Mm. And it's also sped up again. And the finishing subharmonic there was a C sharp D flat one. I believe this one came from Bobby. And folks, I would love to watch through the rest of the video, but we are unfortunately out of time. Whew! So much to talk about here, you guys. Man. I don't think y'all understand how complicated this was. <laughs> There's still stuff that I've probably, I, I know that I've missed, but we just don't have enough time to talk about it all. It's insane. Boys over at the base gang, I've always loved your content and I, as a friend of, as a friend of each of y'all's from the bottom of my heart, this was insane. And please keep on pushing out the content as I know you're going to, because just the only thing I can say is keep doing it <laughs> because you, you guys are getting better every single time <sighs> yeah all right well this has been ethan drew i love you take care of yourselves and we will see you in the next one make sure you check out the patreon link is in the description if you want to support the channel like comment even if it's a smiley face it helps the channel with the algorithm and i will see you in the next video bye <laughs>